Hey guys, this week we are focusing on watercolor. This is gonna be a two-part tutorial. This week we'll start with all the supplies that you need to be successful with watercolor painting. And then a few weeks from now, I'm gonna produce a techniques watercolor video. So look out for that one. And make sure you watch until the end of today's tutorial because there is a super giveaway. This is an awesome prize pack, especially if you're a watercolor artist or getting started in watercolor. So um, watch to the end of the video for that. Guys, I just want to take a sec to say thank you to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Um, you guys are awesome. And this week, because we're doing watercolor supplies, I've released a whole pack of watercolor clip art. It's hand painted by me, flowers, leaves, everything you need to create beautiful watercolor inspired blog headers, landing pages. You can use this for your social media graphics. Um, so go get that now. It's all available for a $2 donation on my Patreon site. So I'm going to start today's video with what I think is the most important of watercolor painting supplies and that is watercolor paper. Now even if you're painting with watercolor paints that you made out of Kool-Aid or coffee or I don't know, whatever, you still want good quality watercolor paper because part of the painting process is really all about how the paint absorbs into that paper and as we all know, thin paper like computer paper buckles when it gets wet and that's what you really don't want. So we're gonna have a long talk about good watercolor paper. Now I just received these um, beautiful pads of watercolor paper from Canson. Um, they're 100% cotton and we'll talk about what that means. Um, and I have one to give away as part of our prize pack for today. So make sure you watch till the end of today's tutorial for the giveaway. Okay, so there's a lot of info out there about paper, but it doesn't need to be confusing. And everything you need to know about the paper that you're buying is contained right here on the front cover. So we're gonna sort of go through this label and demystify it. So first of all, what's easy? Okay, 12 sheets, we know what that means. Um, we've got 12 pieces of paper. Uh, this one is 10 by 14 inches. I do like to typically buy larger pads of paper because even if it's 10 by 14 or 9 by 12, I can still cut it in half and get two usable um, sheets there for different pieces of work. So that's why I usually buy large. And next piece of information, it says 100% cotton. And that means that this paper is artist quality. So paper that is pH neutral, acid free, and 100% cotton, it's not going to deteriorate or yellow over time the way an old newspaper does. Um, and that's important if you're selling your work. So, you know, if you're just painting and scanning it into the computer and making clip art or you're just practicing, you can purchase student quality paper that does contain acid and you don't need to worry about it and you can save the money. But if you're making work that you want to hold on to, that you want to pass down, that you want to sell, even if you're producing prints, so you're printing your work out onto watercolor paper, you need to make sure that it's 100% cotton um, so that time won't cause any trouble. Next piece of info, 300 um, grams per meter squared or 140 pound. We have the weight of the paper and that will always be listed on the front. And uh, GSM means gram per meter squared and pounds means pounds per ream of paper. So 140 pound is a pretty typical weight and it's the one that I paint with often. Typically you're gonna see these four weights, 90 pounds or 190 GSM. That's the really thin, it's good for making prints. 140 pound is a good weight. I think it's recommended that you do still stretch 140 pound paper and I have a video all about that that I'll link in the description. Next would be 260 pound. Um, most people would say at that point, it's not as necessary to stretch your paper. Now it's gonna cost you more, but it's sort of nice you can skip that step. And then 300 pound being um, typically the, the most commercially produced or machine produced heaviest paper. And it's very thick and dense. I use 140 pound because it's so available being one of the machine produced weights and being um, on the lighter end, it's gonna be uh, a good price point. And since I'm not doing landscapes or something where I'm putting tons of color on there and doing lots of washes, I think I, think I can get away without stretching it. Um, but I guess that's a, a personal choice, we'll call it. 
Okay, and then last thing, probably the most important, is this word right in the middle, and that is rough. And there are three types of watercolor paper. There's rough paper, cold pressed, and hot pressed. And those words refer to the type of surface that you're going to be painting on. Now, rough paper, such as this, has a prominent tooth and a textured surface. When you paint on it, you're going to sort of get a grainy effect and you'll get a nice pooling of the paint. Rough paper is good for wet on wet and it's also good for building up washes of color. It can absorb a lot of paint and it's nice for dry brushing because of that texture. If you want to do clouds or trees, you can dry brush and you can pick up that texture and use it to your advantage. Um, one sort of drawback, I guess, would be that it can be hard to control those small, delicate brush strokes because the surface is so toothy. So just something to think about. Next, we have hot pressed paper. And hot pressed is at the other end of the spectrum. It has a fine grain and a smooth surface. It's not very good for building up multiple washes and colors. Um, because very little pigment gets beyond the surface of the paper. The paper sort of gets overloaded. And that has to do with how much pressure is applied in the making of the paper and how close the cotton fibers are. So you can see here on this hot press paper, the painting's a little bit flat. The paint doesn't have anywhere to go, but on a rough paper, the paint and water can seep down in between those cotton fibers, which are farther apart. So it's better for ink, uh, pen and ink, for gouache, and I don't use it very often because it can be hard to build up nice um, amounts of color and you certainly don't get that beautiful watercolor texture that you desire. Now the one positive here is that it's really nice for scanning into a computer. So if you're doing a lot of watercolor that you want to use online, say for your blog header, using a hot press paper means that you're not picking up all that shadowy texture in your scanner when you go to use this um, as a graphic. So that's something to think about, but then again, you don't get the beautiful watercolor look. So this one, I consider it much, much better for pen and ink. Okay, and then in the middle, we have our Goldilocks paper, and that is cold pressed. And it really is in between rough and hot pressed. So you get um, a nice textured paper that's not overly rough. So it's good for doing small detail, but it's also good for doing washes and building up color. Um, it's the choice of many artists because it is the best of both worlds. And it's truly my favorite paper and the one that you'll see me use over and over again on the channel. The last thing you want to consider when it comes to paper is do you want to stretch your paper? It's always a good idea to do so. I'm a very lazy artist and I rarely do that. But there is one product that can help with that and that is a watercolor paper block. Um, it's a really cool product. And I have a couple here from Canson. All the sheets are um, stuck together to form a block. And this is good for plain air painting or when you're outdoors or on the go. You can do your painting and then you take a little X-Acto knife once it's dry and then you carefully cut out or cut off that top sheet and peel it off. Um, and this will keep your, your paper fairly stretched while you're painting. Okay, next we're going to talk about watercolor paints. Now, there's a lot of wonderful things about watercolors. They're fun to use, they're non-toxic, they're easy cleanup, and of course they mix with water, um, which makes them beautifully translucent and very fluid. And that fluidity, well, and same with the translucency actually, those two attributes can make watercolor your most hated medium. And for a long time, I absolutely hated watercolor. First of all, that translucent nature, it makes it really hard to cover up a mistake. And the fluidity, it means that that paint is liable to get away from you and you're always not quite in control of the paint. But as I get older, that's what I've really come to love about watercolor, is that fluidity means I have to enjoy the process and it's not about always getting it right. So now that's actually one of my favorite things um, about this medium. Now there are three different types of watercolor paints. There are watercolor tubes, pans or discs, and liquid watercolors. And there's no one type that's better than another. Um, all of them can be purchased in artist quality or student quality or craft quality, um, but it's really just about choosing the one that's right for you. Maybe you really love 
discs, but then you prefer um, tubes when you're doing large scale pieces, you know, so all of them are, I think are quite equal. You simply need to decide which uh, type is best for you, and then you need to decide which quality you're willing to pay for. If you're selling your work, go with artist quality. If you're practicing, stick to student quality to save money. And when you're talking about artist quality, you're really talking about the quality of the pigment. So watercolors are made up of finely ground pigment, um, and that pigment is what colors the paint. And then there's other ingredients in there, and we're not going to get too detailed, but there's, you know, something to bind the paint, there's something to moisturize it so it doesn't get dry and gross, and there might be something to help facilitate the flow of the paint. But it's really all about the quality of that pigment. And a good quality pigment means that the paint will have a nice vibrancy of color, a trueness of color and also a longevity of color so you want when you're buying artists paint and you're spending that extra money for those paints to last on the page and stay true over the years of course if you're just practicing and you're getting to know this medium you're not going to want to spend the money on artist quality paints so hunt around for something that is a good price and has a good pigment uh, as well say something like this praying watercolor set Part of the problem you're going to have is just simply that the colors are so washed out you're not going to be able to get a real vibrancy of color but it doesn't mean you can't make something nice with them and I use this praying set to do a wreath um, and it's one of my most popular videos and I will link that in the description below as well. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know that probably you can guess my favorite type and that is the pans or the discs. The reason I like them is because I find them really easy to get started with. You can sort of jump right in when you're painting with discs. A lot of them come with a palette in the lid. Um, the Sakura set does and I just, mine's in the kitchen in the sink or something. But um, that makes it really easy. You can just get your water and start mixing. Tubes are really nice because they um, you can mix up large quantities of a color. So if you're trying to mix a certain shade of blue that doesn't come in your set, it can be hard to mix up enough of that blue to do a whole 20 by 30 piece, say you're trying to do a sky wash. But when you're working with a tube, that's going to be much easier, isn't it? Because you can mix up a large amount. And then the nice thing about the liquid colors is that they are very, very vibrant. So you can get an extremely vibrant um, color and they're actually uh, dye based. So they will stain the page. Um, and they're wonderful for doing illustration work, especially. Okay, and when it comes to paint brushes, um, specifically for watercolor, again, this is a big subject. I could probably do a whole video just on this, but I just wanna give you enough information that you can make informed choices and you're not just sort of bogged down with info. Um, so, what should a brush do? Well, a good brush, a successful paint brush, should hold a good amount of paint and water sort of in its belly. Um, so above the tip, you want to have paint in your brush. Um, a good brush should have a nice, delicate, fine point, whether it's a round or a flat, it should have a nice, fine tip. And finally, a good brush will allow your paint to flow onto the page in an easy, smooth, fluid motion. So that's sort of what you're wanting out of your brush. Um, and then brushes, there's three things you're going to think about when you're shopping for a brush. And the first is the type, so the type of hair, the size, and the shape. Now when it comes to different types of brush bristle hair, there are animal hairs. So I think, gosh, okay, it's pig and ox and squirrel are quite common. And, um, and goat. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of those, and I'm pretty sure this is the hog hair brush, the, the light colored ones. I'm not into using animal brushes very often. I just find they're not for me. And um, I know a lot of people also prefer, you know, man-made over animal-made, and I totally get that as well. Um, so I'm not usually using these kind of brushes. I prefer synthetic bristles and synthetic bristles are usually made from nylon or polyester and while some of the typical animal hair brushes like hog hair brushes will be really cheap there are very expensive sought after animal brushes that are much more expensive and the synthetic brushes are meant to mimic those really high quality ones so for my purposes i really like the nylon bristles 
And so once you've chosen what type of bristle you're going to go for, you need to think about the size of the brush. And this often just comes down to, well, what size is your project? So if you're doing a lot of four by six greeting cards, you're going to be using, you know, fairly small brushes. And um, these are sort of the brushes that I employ constantly. Um, this is a number 10 and a 12. So I'm using these all the time. They're sort of not too big and not too small. Um, to compare, this is I think the one and the three, and then this would be more like a 20. And this is good for larger work. So these are my go-to brushes. Nylon bristles, um, everything from sort of one up to 20, although you don't need them all, um, just you know a selection. And then the last thing you're gonna think about is the shape. And there are many different brush shapes and there are many different ways to use each shape and you know the why you would use a flat brush here or a versus a round brush we're not going to get into any of that i'm basically going to say that for most of what i do i like a round brush and it's important to have a round brush with a nice fine tip so that comes to a nice fine point a nice round brush with a fine point will hold lots of paint in its belly and then you'll be able to get these beautiful fine delicate lines as you paint um, because it has the brush has a good tip so that is what I'm gonna say about brushes. Think about the size that you need, what kind of bristle, I like nylon or synthetic, and the shape. And I think a lot of watercolor artists would agree with me on this. If you just get a selection of round brushes with a good fine tip, um, it's gonna be a really good start. And of course, all of the supplies that we've used in today's tutorial are linked in the description below. So check the video description for the Amazon links to all of these products and more of my favorites. Thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you'll check out some of the other watercolor tutorials and look out in a couple weeks for the watercolor techniques video. But right now, you should go enter the giveaway because this is a super prize pack. There is some gorgeous, thick 140 pound watercolor paper from Canson, as well as a watercolor field set, the 30 pan from Sakura, complete with a palette and a water brush. So um, check the video description for a link that will let you into the giveaway and from there there's tons of different ways to enter. So we hope that it'll be fair for everybody. Tons of ways to enter this giveaway and international entries are welcome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.